Today's YouTube video is all on how to paint glasses on your mixed media girls. Now there's a lot of references out there and there's a lot of illustrators who do glasses in different ways and they make the reflection look a different way. And today the reference I'm using, I started out with this illustration by Leo Van and then I tracked down the original inspiration which was actually a photograph from Vogue Japan. I am filming this during the coronavirus and I'm not really into makeup and showering <laughs> as frequently. I should just say makeup. So this is me. My name's Karen Campbell. This is the first visit to my channel. I like to make art super easy for you drawing and mixed media so that you can just relax and have fun while you're making your projects. So on to the project. So I have both the Leo Van's digital illustration in front of me as well as the photograph from the magazine which again is um, from Vogue from Japan. Oh, and before I forget, shout out to Amanda Spence, who is my patron on Patreon, who recommended I do this video today. She brought up the, well, she suggested this to me just, just two days ago, and I've been really kind of lacking in inspiration lately. And as soon as she said very, very politely over email, would you mind maybe someday doing a girl with glasses? I was like, yes, I can. That's a great idea. And I've been meaning to do this forever. So I'm super glad she suggested it. And I'm really happy to bring this little demo to you today. Now I'm time-lapsing the original sketching and the first phases of the girl, but then I'm going to put this in real time when it gets to actually doing the glasses part so that I'm not cheating you out of the, the lesson portion of this. That's my cat Tippy. She likes to um, she likes to cuddle with me. She's my nicest and my meanest cat of all three cats. So she's the snuggliest, but she's also like, oh, she's a little bit of a biter. So when I tried to move her, look at right here, she snaps at me, little, little jerk. <laughs> So we had a nice snuggle and then she had to go. Um, so yeah, so it took a while to get the perspective of all of the pieces of this drawing to be to be something I was satisfied with because you don't have both the top of the head and the chin are cropped. You lose the guidelines that I would normally use for a face, a full face. When you're doing a full oval, oval you can't do that. And also the hands. Now I've just finished publishing um, an entire book on how to draw hands. So hands scare me no more. I also have 31 hand full length lessons in my Fun Fab Drawing Club. So I, for once, now that I have all those hands under my belt, I really am not afraid to tackle them in any position and in any piece. That being said, proportions um, are always tricky no matter what body part you're drawing and especially if you have hands near a face you need to make sure that the proportions are correct so that's the biggest struggle more so than the the drawing of them is actually drawing them well but also drawing them well proportionally so if you followed me for a long time, you know I am a, definitely a mixed media artist. Today I wanted to play around with some new materials and combine them in new ways. So I'm using Noodler's ink, which is fountain pen ink. I have been having a growing obsession and collection with these and I decided to mix and match them with my Winsor Newton watercolor markers Meh, with mixed success. I wasn't loving how the markers were reacting. So I end up, um, kind of giving up on the markers and just going straight for my inks, which is kind of what I wanted to do anyways. I also found the perfect skin color of fountain pen ink, which is called Nude, and it's like a French manufacturer. Very fancy, it took an entire month to get here, but it's the most perfect Caucasian skin color. And then what I did is I mixed that with um, a half and half of that nude color with Noodler's ink in golden brown. And then that's the shading portion that you're looking at right there. So the hair is straight up golden brown and the skin color was straight up nude. And when you put them together, you get that in-between tone right there, which I was super happy with. I use them straight up from the bottle. I don't tend to mix things other than what you saw me mix in here. Oh, I should have showed you. I um, dropped this entire ink bottle filled three ounces of permanent ink. That's the eye color that you see there. That's 54th Massachusetts. That is a Noodler's ink. And yeah, I spilled it all over my foot and my hands, which is now why my hands are blue. Um, yeah, all over my carpet. But I honestly just kept rolling because I was super into my girl and I was like, whatever, that disaster is 
like it, it is what it is and it's too late now. So I've also put a little bit of my Noodlers black ink into that water brush so that I could have some fine control over um, the eye, the parts of the eye, the eyelashes and the pupils and the little eye crease. And I love, I'm a, I'm a doodler. I love to draw as much as I love to paint. So I always have sort of both going on in all my mixed media projects. So this was super fun. I decided to change it up a little, my goodness. I'm pretty much, everything else is staying the same. So I thought the least I could do was give this girl a different sweater color, right? So that's Noodler's Inc. in Purple's Martin, which was my very first ink color that I ever bought. So we're almost getting ready for the eyes. Not that much longer, I'm sorry, glasses, I should say. This is a Copic acrylic ink that I just bought and it's I'm obsessed it's so opaque um, I was it was recommended to me by another youtuber and it is it's amazing it's better than all my art markers all the paint pens it's just straight up white paint a little tiny tube of it and I love it so okay fantastic we are getting to the fun part which is actually putting the glasses on the girls so I went through a couple renditions of doing this with different size circles the cool thing about ink is if you use a pencil and draw on top of it you can erase it completely underneath it which you couldn't do if this was an acrylics so love that so I just sketched out the size that I think would be good and then once I had it I used a paint pen bar by Arteza that Arteza sent me I love these paint pens they're just as good as Posca's and they're all I have a big nice juicy nib which is exactly what I needed for doing the glasses on her since in the original reference it's very bold if they're actually black so this one I'm doing in like a dark gray because I didn't want to be super crazy crazy bold but still dark um, and they were like a little bit big so I was trying to figure out how to kind of work that in a way that I was happy with and I decided to make them better after I put the little eye pieces on by making them a double thickness so I just did another layer and then that made them appear not quite as large but the biggest trick Amanda Spence since you asked to doing glasses on your mixed media girls is to do your girls a hundred percent go all the way and finish them off and then you're literally painting the glasses right on top now it's scary I'm not gonna lie when you have something that could be considered finished and then all of a sudden you're diving back in and drawing a design of glasses on top like what if it doesn't look good what if you screw up what if there's a lot of what ifs so I'm not gonna lie it takes a lot of courage and you have to be a little brave to go ahead and just start painting circles on top of like a beautifully finished girl. So here's my advice to you. Just go for it. Just remember, we only live once. If the worst that's gonna happen is you do make a mistake, whatever. You can always make these sunglasses or something, right? So after I did the, the I did like a double thickness and then I decided I'm kind of going off the grid here and I decided it would look cooler if I had a little bit of reflection going on in the frame. So I'm taking that, that white acrylic paint and I'm just very slightly adding a little reflection. So this is making it a little bit more my own. And then I decided for some crazy reason, no, I'm just kidding. I needed to add the biggest mm, way to make your glasses look realistic or look going one step further than just painting them on is making sure you are depicting the shadows that are created by the glasses onto the face. So you want to take a really quick peek and a deep look at where the shadows are showing up. So you have under the glass frames on either side is number one. You also have them on that left hand side and you also have them on the nose bridge where that metal piece meets the nose bridge. So you have to make sure you go back to your reference and always use a reference for your most successful pieces. It will help you so much. And then you can very painstakingly go and try to recreate the shadows that you see. So I'm using a watered down gray. It's actually Lexington gray. It's a Noodler's ink. And I just filled it. This pen is filled with half gray, half water. I didn't want like super dark, but I wanted just enough. See, it's like just enough of a, it's so, so subtle, which these are, this, the shadows are much scarier than the actual glasses because it's such a light line. But can you see by putting that little line down there, how all of a sudden those glasses 
houses go from 2D to 3D just by having those little shadow lines in there. And I'm not making up where they go. I'm just looking at the photograph and I'm having the photograph inform all of my decisions and where all these things are gonna go. So just remember that, always use a reference and always just try to recreate what it is that you see. You don't have to go rogue here, you can just duplicate what you see the best you can. And then if you wanna add on and do some special things like this, you can. So I decided, huh, it might look cool if for this, if I like, it would they would stick out from her face a little bit more, maybe I outlined them a little. So like, you know, you can still get creative, sorry about my big head, and add in a little extra touch. I like outlining them just a touch because it makes them look more illustrative. They were looking very like robotic because they were so perfect because I used the glass and everything else was hand drawn. So this, this adds actual wonky lines that I actually kind of want to look wonky on purpose because it ties in with the style um, better than what I had going before. So it's not, it's not a continuous line all the way across. So again, I'm gonna look right back now and I'm looking at the shading that was giving a quick look at the nose. It's like, okay, my glasses look good. Now what else can I do? I noticed that nose was a little bit darker in the reference than it was on my picture. So I'm just gonna go back with that diluted gray and just punch up a few places that I thought could look a little bit, have a little bit more shading. That's all I'm doing. These are very subtle you know, just a little bit of light gray and add a wash and kind of see what the effect was. And I like it because it's um, a, it's a cool tone and the orange under it is really, really warm. So it kind of cools it down and offsets some of that orangeness that you're seeing everywhere. So I'm also noticing there's a lot more shading up in that area by the eye. So I'm again saying, all right, well, I know that needs to be darker. So I'm gonna go back in with that gray and I'm gonna add in the shading, again, exactly where I see it on the photo. I'm not like making this up out of thin air. All the information is there for me. It's also a little bit darker on this side. So I'm adding a little bit of that gray there as well. And then a really interesting thing started to happen that I started to notice, which was as I was putting in this cool tone, it was sort of the opposite effect that I saw in this digital photo. There's like white highlights. What I was creating was more like these shadows here where the shadows of the glasses are reflected onto the face. So that's what I decided. It was like, oh, that really looks cool. I should add a little bit more of this gray and kind of that's what this, I am going a little rogue here, but again, I was using different references to inform my decision. Like, oh, I like how it looks like the glasses frames are reflected onto the face. I'm gonna try that. So if you like this video, I would love it if you give it a thumbs up. If you wanna subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications, you will get notified every time I post new videos, which is every Friday morning. I love this project so much. I'm gonna do another glasses one next week. So I will see you here next week. In the meantime, enjoy this next video and I'll see you there.